from Mumbai to Chirle in 22 minutes at a toll of 250 rupees. Yes, this is the biggest speciality of this bridge, the Atal Setu. The distance between Mumbai and Navi Mumbai, which generally takes an hour and 45 minutes for people to cover, will now be covered in just 22 minutes and that is the biggest USP. Saving of time, saving of petrol, saving of fuel. Most importantly, these are the two places which have two important ports. The Mumbai port will be connected to Jawaharlal Nehru port and that is the major traffic that is being expected. The trucks which will ferry goods from one port to another are expected to use this. Now this 22 kilometer long sea bridge has been built majorly on the sea. 16.5 kilometers of its component has been constructed on the sea. But remember this has been an extremely challenging construction for the several companies which have been involved. Let me tell you experts from 10 different countries have been a part of this entire project and they have been consulting the MMRDA over this, Japan's involvement has been tremendous. In fact, it is JICA which gave a massive loan for the completion of this project. So if you look at the project itself, it has been technologically, technically quite complicated. The 16.5 kilometers component that has been built on sea has used several new technologies. There were several environmental concerns that were raised at that time. The mud flats also have seen some construction and the land part is where the remaining construction has happened. So technologically, several challenges that this project had faced have been overcome by the usage of innovative technologies. The MMRDA claims that the flamingos have only returned to the mud flats in larger numbers and the environmental concerns have been proven to be false. MTHL is the longest ocean bridge in South Asia. We are going to talk about the magnitude of engineering marvel that this bridge is and the challenges that were faced during its construction. Most importantly, there are experts from 10 different countries who were a part of this entire process. Right now, I have with me Ivan Yit Yu Chan, who is one such consultant. He is from Canada. So, thank you for speaking to CNN News 18. Thank you. If you me. could tell us particularly about the reasons why this is an engineering marvel and what are the specialties of MTHL. Okay. MTHL is the, as you said, is the longest bridge in Asia. I believe there's uh, also in the world, maybe there's a third or second. Uh, this bridge is very significant to Mumbai, India. It is connected from Zui to uh, Chile and about 22 kilometer long. That will shorten all the commuter travel time and also connected to all future development area like future airport, Neve Mumbai airport and also facilitate the ports uh, business as well. So that's a crucial uh, so-called roadway for the entire Mumbai developments. The, the marvelous of this project is not because of its size. It, this is of course the size is very huge. In terms of the technical aspects that's very unique because this bridge we have using um, uh, different type of uh, design criteria uh, first is the OSD is a steel deck bridge that's using uh, uh, the Japanese method to create the, uh, the span why we use this is because the span is too huge it's about 180 meter long the, 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 the span the biggest spans and uh, therefore, if we use the traditional uh, concrete deck, it will become very difficult. Therefore, we create uh, by using the OSD deck uh, to facilitate this kind of land span, uh, long span that, uh, structures. Um, also, the, the second uh, technical aspects is we are using, because we need to do the piling, 
bound to the uh, ocean bed. Um, we use the uh, oscillation driven power method instead of the traditional uh, you know hammer type. Two reasons is reduce the um, noise uh, in the surrounding area. The second is reduce the pollutions. With, like we are used to driven the power into the back rod, we provide a better uh, environmental protections to the natures. Uh, the third one is um, the reinforcement. We have using um, uh, epoxy coating rebars. Why? Because we can extend the lifetime of the structures. Um, also, we in this particular project, we have built a steel bridges. This temporary steel bridges, why we do it this way? Because we need to transport the Picasso elements to the outskirts out of the bridges in the oceans. But in Mumbai, where the, the wetland area closing to the shoreline is a mud area. The barge cannot get in. Therefore, we need to design some kind of a, a connections between the shoreline to the uh, outskirt, outskirt area. Two methods. One is the land reclamations, but this will have a big interruptions to the mother nature's create the pollution and disturb the wildlife. That's why we design a steel bridge, ten, temporary steel bridge. Uh, for the transportation of the materials and the Picasso element. That will reduce noise, reduce the backfilling. If you use a, a reclamation method, that would be, uh, the time will be impossible and also will create a lot of pollution on the oceans. Um, also, uh, when we doing the erections of the Picasso units, and the uh, OSD steel deck, we have designed a very special barge, we call H barge. Why there's an H shape? Because when we, there's a P in here, the barge can go in the middle so that we can lift the, the Picasso element to the top of the deck. If we use a traditional barge, that would be very difficult because there's a pier obstructing the barge. So that is another so-called unique uh, method we are applied to these projects. Um, that's the, 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 the concept, how do we um, impl imply a, a, a sophisticated method of construction, not only to expertise the work, is produce the best of the structure for Mumbai people. You're talking of extremely specific technical things that have been used as innovations for this That's bridge. That's correct. Clearly, you know, with a massive project like this, the challenges would also have been immense. If you could talk to us through the challenges that you faced during the project. Oh, um, the, the challenges of this project, uh, of course, the size will be a, a significant thing. Uh, the other concern is the environment. Uh, because we are doing the bridge across the ocean, you will affect the uh, wildlife, the nature wildlife, and also the, the birds in the surrounding area. So we take a extreme cautions and in the design stage, how do we safeguard this prospect? In terms of Femingo, we have designed a noise barrier along the bridge in order to reduce the noise against the bird, okay? And also, when we do the, as I mentioned before, when we do the foundation of the piers, we use a, a rotationary uh, driven power method that will reduce the, the negative impact to the ocean life. We reduce the pollutions, we reduce the noise, and we expertise the work speed to taking care of the mother natures. Um, also, this, this um, don't forget Mumbai is a, a, a inclement weather like the monsoon and the cyclone and this kind of weather will affect the progress of the work. Therefore, we need to take into consideration of this type of uh, 
nature effects against the projects. That's already put when we do the design, this kind of thing, what OSD, why? That's a prefabricate, 180 meter long, so we can produce in the factory and then deliver to the site and erect it. That will save the time. So um, in terms of the uh, whether uh, negative impacts will be become meaning uh, minimize it to a very small level. That is the um, the um, uh, the method to overcome the challenges. So clearly, you know, a major milestone has been achieved with respect to several infrastructure projects that are now teaming up in India. Right now, MTHL, which is being touted as the biggest ocean bridge across Asia, a pride which is going to be inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the 12th of January. These are the technical details we are hearing from the experts with respect to the reason why this project should be cherished. Now, one of the concerns was the noise that the vehicles will generate when they will move on Atal Setu. And in order to cut down on this noise, these transparent noise barriers have been set up across the Atal Setu. Now, what is their speciality? While you can see that they are transparent, you can see through them, you can see the glorious sunset that's happening right behind me. But what's also important is that they are so strong that the noise gets cut. And in fact, instead of spreading, it moves up, thereby generating a very strong sound barrier across the Atal Setu. Now, there was another concern. And what was that? This 22 kilometer long uh, sea bridge also passes through a route that uh, oversees some of the major security installations of India. So may it be the Bhabha Atomic Research Center, may it be HPCL, BPCL. We are seeing that all these things are dotted on uh, this coastline of Mumbai. And in order to find solution to that, we see that this visual barrier has been set up across the entire stretch from where there would have been visibility of BARC, HPCL, BPCL, thereby ma making sure that the uh, privacy of these vital security installations remains intact even as connectivity of Mumbai to other parts of coastal Maharashtra increases. So these are the two important features. Atal Setu, this is the 22 kilometer long ocean bridge, India's longest ocean bridge that is being inaugurated by Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the 12th of January. And to talk about the specialities of this massive infrastructure project here in Mumbai, I have with me MMRDA Commissioner Sanjay Mukherjee. Sir, thank you so much for speaking to CNN News 18. This is a massive achievement for the MMRDA. How do you look at it? Well, I see this as a huge thing for us and for the state. And I think uh, even at the national level, uh, this is India's longest sea bridge. It is one of the longest in Asia. It is amongst the longest in the world. It has been built by technologies which were hitherto unknown. And, you know, uh, 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 it is a game changer in more ways than one. So, sir, if you could talk to us about the specialities of this 22 kilometer long ocean bridge, as we already know that this is the biggest, the longest in India. What are the other qualities that ma make this different from any other bridge that has been constructed here, particularly because this also crosses several key installations which are important defense-wise? Well, firstly, it connects the old dream of every Mumbaiker. The island city is there and the hinterland is there. And these two are to be connected. That's a very old dream of people who live in Mumbai. So this dream is now, uh, you know, it is being uh, fructified by the means of this bridge, that is one. If you see from the engineering angle or the technical angle, then it is an amazing bridge. See, 16 and a half kilometers of the bridge is bang on the sea. Remaining is an elevated road. It moves to three types of terrains. First is it moves to the land, then a part of it is on the mud flat area, and then beyond that, you know, it is, uh, well, it goes over the, the sea. 
certain technologies not used ever like the high end orthotropic steel decks which has enabled us to have spans as long as 180 meters thereby you know pre pre uh, continuing with the sanctity of the navigational uh, channels the use of uh, reverse circulation rigs which enabled us to move with minimum uh, you know vibrations minimum disturbance to the habitats so there were doubts about the flamingos and what is the impact on them so i'm happy to say that the number of flamingos which have visited like last year 24000 plus visited that number has gone up it has not come down not a single mud flat has been uh, damaged in this process the flora and fauna on both sides have been maintained so it is a very good example of sustainable uh, you know development and i am very happy to mention here that the bombay national natural history society which is a very very reputed and accomplished institute yes. has also given its uh, certificate of appreciation for this uh, particular project so that is the technical part sound barriers and silencers were used during construction interestingly this bridge is uh, seismic resistant Hmm. It is so that was going to be, in fact, my next question because not just earthquake, but you know, uh, Mumbai is something that has now started getting prone to cyclones as well. Though not as much earthquake, but clearly a project like this will have to consider all these factors as well. So, with respect to dangers, particularly with respect to cyclones as well as earthquakes, how is this bridge equipped? Well, plain and simple. In simple words, two point five times. more than the required thing is there so if the seismic uh, quantity is x then 2.5 times of that has been used so this gives this bridge an amazing uh, you know strength certain uh, engineering techniques like flow coated epoxy uh, coating for all the concrete a very high end uh, type of engineering has been used here so the life span of the bridge which we have anticipated 100 years that is a minimum life span that the bridge will have and i'm sure it will do better than that in the days to come so now it is uh, Uh, programmed it is seismically resistant and it is also you know cyclone resistant so one quick question you know mumbaikers have been dreaming about this bridge for quite a few years what is it that they will be able to enjoy with respect to the time that they will be able to save and what is the money they will have to shell out in order to travel on this bridge well i think the matter came out in the news that the toll has been fixed at uh, 250 rupees uh, for the cars and the honorable cm yesterday in fact made a statement to the media on that matter the toll for the other uh, uh, types of traffic would be proportionate to that so i think uh, for a uh, in, in case of the bandra valley ceiling the toll is something near 900 rupees this is five times that size so according to the toll is actually much less and uh, uh, i hope that people do uh, use this bridge to the uh, to the to its full capacity so uh, you know i want to know how much time will it save for mumbaikers this is connecting mumbai to chirle people will be able to go to their onward journey may it be pune may it be coastal maharashtra where all will it connect whether it will connect to the airport as well the new airport that is coming up and how much time will it save for mumbaikers well, plain and simple the time it takes to go from say from shivri or from uh, uh, south bombay to uh, ulve uh, in uh, Uh, is something like one hours forty five minutes to two hours, and absolutely, if you go in the morning when there is no traffic, then it is about an hour and a uh, fifteen minutes or so. Now this bridge will you will cross this bridge in twenty two minutes, at ten minutes on either side. So that's the time. It's more than half or more than half. That is the amount of time that that it will save. Interestingly, every uh, trip, as far as the petrol and all these things are concerned, if you take all those things into consideration, that it saves seven hundred to eight hundred rupees per trip. of per vehicle you know so that is the incidental uh, you know k k amount that you save by not moving there is a k so that is the amount of time that you save the money that you save the toll is lesser compared to the other uh, roads and the k savings in terms of uh, petrol and uh, k and also you know damage to the vehicles and all that so all those things will also be pretty substantial and the locations which this bridge will easily connect mumbai to so from mumbai i think that's a very good question and i should explain what are the connectors so we have got three uh, to four interchanges here the interchange at mumbai we have got two connectors at uh, uh, you know at shivri you know so that is mainly for jnpt and bpt connectivity and then we have got uh, uh, a connector to to the eastern uh, expressway so most of the cars will come through the expressway and then you also have a 
Varli Shivri uh, bridge which is being constructed. So that uh, spur is ready and as that bridge will be completed next year, you can directly go to Varli from this bridge and thereby you can get into the Bandravali ceiling or you can get into the coastal road which shall be commissioned very shortly, I am hopeful. While there will be connectivity from within the city that we can see, we will also see what is the connectivity outside the city. So, so you were telling us that in Mumbai, as the project gets completed, it will be connected to several locations, western suburbs, south Mumbai. What about places outside Mumbai? So outside, outside Mumbai, it is uh, having a first connectivity where it uh, lands. That is at Ulve in a place called Shivaji Nagar. And at uh, Shivaji Nagar, this will uh, uh, connect to Ulve. And then it has two arms. One arm goes and joins the proposed uh, coastal road of Sitco, which is called as the Ulve Coastal Road. That will take it to the international airport. So from the uh, junction point of Shivaji Nagar to the international airport, the estimated time would be four minutes. And uh, otherwise, it will go ahead and it will join to the Palm Beach Road. So the estimated time from the connector to the Palm Beach Road uh, through the Sitco Ulve Coastal Road is expected to be 9 to 11 minutes. So that is the uh, thing. On the right hand side as you go this way, it, will, it, is, the, it is to connect to the Khargar Coastal Road. And that Khargar Coastal Road joins and connects to Khargar and then to the International Co uh, you know, Corporate Park which is being planned by Sitco. So that is the connectivity at Ulve. You go further down, you come to a very famous village called as Jasei. That's the birth town of Deepa Patil Saab, who was a very eminent leader of that area. And there uh, it uh, connects at uh, there's a down ramp and the upper ramp at Jasei and the national highway there. Further down, you go down to Chirle. And then Chirle again, there are up ramps and down ramps to connect to Chirle. There is also a, a, a direct ramp which goes to the JNPT. So in the, in the Navi Mumbai side, there are about three interchanges. On the Mumbai side, there is one interchange, but it connects the way the road network is being planned in Mumbai. It would be connecting almost this entire area. So as far as connectivity is concerned, in the immediate run, it is going to make a huge change. But in the next uh, couple of years, when these projects also, you know, the incidental projects, they get completed, then further improvement in the traveling that will happen. We are also intending to connect this to the Mumbai Pune Expressway, uh, to the proposed multimodal corridor, and that way the connectivity. Multimodal corridor, now the land acquisition part is going on. The connector to uh, Mumbai to, uh, of the, of, uh, to the Pune Expressway, that work will start shortly, so that should take two years. So, uh, you know, massive project. Mumbai cars are waiting with bated breath for this. Thank you so much for your time. So, this was Mukherjee, sir, telling CNN News 18 about the specialities of this bridge, India's longest sea bridge that will be open for traffic coming 12th January. The year 2024 brings with it a lot of excitement and hope for Mumbai cars particularly for the kind of infrastructure projects may be the increasing web of the metro, the coastal road or this Atal Setu. It only shows that the aspirations of Mumbaikers will now have more opportunities to expand with the growing infrastructure. With video journalist Abhijit Sen Gupta, this is Vinaya Deshpande from Atal Setu.